96 FM. The way we travel for holidays is changing. Now, for me, it changed a few years ago because I've been doing this self-booking and self-packaging for, for quite a number of years. Um, once I figured out how to do it myself, and yes, I have saved money, there is a lot of planning in it, there is a lot of work in it, but it's kind of the way forward. So we're going to be doing more of our own planning. The days of the cheap package holiday are probably... They're numbered at least. Owen Corey, travel journalist, joins me to discuss this for a little while. The days of the cheap package holiday, Owen, they're, they're probably numbered if they're not gone. Good morning. Good morning, Chief DJ. Well, it's under pressure because of fuel prices. That's the biggest single factor. Um, everything at the prices on the ground, the hotel, your transfers, all of those, they're being rising. We see that rise during the summer. We see shortage of hotel beds, not just famously in parts of Ireland, not just Dublin, but other parts of Galway have had a problem and Killarney, but they also have cropped up in different parts of Europe. So are we going to be paying more for our package holiday? Yes. Is it still very good value? Yes. And are there still terrific bargains to be found? Yes. If you manage to weasel, to get yourself in on the edges of the peaks, it's all about peaks and troughs, and it's a very unforgiving product. The price goes very high when demand is high, school holidays, all of that. And if you can get yourself in on the edges of that, you can still find very, very good value. And, and with small children, it probably is the safest way to do it. Just go through a brochure or through a travel agent and do it that way. Now... When I started doing it myself, which at this stage is probably seven or eight years ago, immediately I began to save money. I, I can't argue that. But there is a risk involved. You have to be double careful with everything you do, don't you? Right. The saving money thing is uh, very apparent when you look at your internet prices. It's when you start putting in the complex, the squidgy bits at the end, that while the price of a direct flight, you can, you know, let's face it, it, it Doing your own booking, the most important thing you have is control. You have access to all these fares, these options. Oh, I'll go through a third airport to save 20 euro or 30 euro. And then you start making that booking. And as you say, it's time consuming. It also gets a bit more difficult when you start factoring in the other things you have to worry about. The main things people going on a package holiday have to worry about are three things. They're just the, the flight, the accommodation, and the transfer. The transfer in a package holiday is looked after. Um, it, there's no real cheaper way of doing a transfer than doing it as part of your package holiday. Mm. Sometimes the hotel uh, can be cheaper in uh, when you're booking direct. But you've got to remember, a package holiday, it's done either by a tour operator. Or everything was by a tour operator in the old days. Nowadays, uh, travel agents do a thing called dynamic packaging, where they do the flight transfer and accommodation accommodation for you. Yeah. But they're going to be booking 10,000. A tour operator is going to be booking 10,000 rooms in the season. Um, some of the tour operators, like TUI, own their own hotels. So if you're buying one room and if you're buying 10,000 rooms, your price is going to be different. The same can apply with aircraft. If you're buying them in bulk, you buy the seats in bulk, you get them cheaper. So when you say, okay, book online, no middleman, nobody taking 10% or 15%, and that was, a, that was a lot of people taking a percentage here and there in the old days, but it sounds like it should be automatically cheaper. But then you put in at the other side the fact that someone is buying in bulk and they have that that command for a lower price that a supplier has uh, when they're supplying in bulk. Uh, that, that can balance out the price. I notice, for instance, a lot of Orlando packages uh, this summer. Mm. Once, uh, if you went through your travel agent, there's two or three major operators on that. Uh, American Holidays Tour America, the most prominent in Ireland, it could work out 150, 200 euro cheaper than doing it yourself. Now, there are also the all that uh, extra stuff about what hotels are available close to where you want to go. Obviously, Orlando, the only reason they're going there is theme parks. A lot of Spain, it's access to the beach and closeness to water parks. So it's a complex process. And while travel agents uh, and tour operators, they won't like me saying this, um, they ran with the margin. They were pretty much in control. They had all the information. They had all the access to tickets until somebody invented the Internet without telling them. Um, they were taking very high margins in the past 
most tour operators and travel agents are operating on a very small margin now. It's basically turning it over at a volume, and they have managed to move in and compete on the price because otherwise they wouldn't stay in business. Yeah. Now, something that people do as well, and again, I've done it myself several times, is you book through a lettings platform, a rental platform. Now, Airbnb is obviously one of the biggest in the world. I've never gone through Airbnb myself, but I know my daughter has several times. Holiday Lettings is another one. Home to Go is another one. And I found one recently called VRBO. And of course, there's the old favorite booking.com. There are, there are advantages and pitfalls, aren't there? There are, and they're all very different. I mean, booking.com uh, rules the world. Airbnb rules the uh, self rental or the, the small the individual homeowner letting a room. There are about uh, there are over 200 competitors in both of those areas. But you've got to remember that uh, instead of Booking.com doesn't cut out the middleman, it, it creates another middleman, and very often they're taking 20% of your overall price. The reason that people use them is it's very convenient. It's a bit complicated to go directly to a hotel. Hoteliers will be listening to us this morning. The Irish Hotels Federation and the Hoteliers of Ireland have worked really hard to create an alternative to the Booking.com, uh, the, uh, the, the online uh, travel agents, uh, because our Booking.com isn't the only one. We're just picking it as the bigger one. But they are trying to create their own alternative. But their biggest problem is your customer finds it difficult to find the individual hotel website. There is always as good a price as Booking.com to be got direct from the hotel. Mm -hmm. If you contact them on their website or if you phone them, you will get as good a deal as Booking.com are offering you. But the reality is that that's extra time, extra hassle. And people go through Booking.com because it's easy and it's transformed the way we, we uh, book uh, the website, uh, there, there are other, Trivago.ie is a very good website for price comparison and it shows you the different uh, hotel prices. Mm. Uh, sometimes Booking.com um, with some of its competitors, uh, Kayak and uh, um, even uh, Last Minute and all of these people will have small differences in price, maybe two, three, four euro in differences in price for the same hotel. Trivago puts all that together. It's a good aggregator site. If you have time, go yeah. back to the hotel directly and see if they'll match the rate or even give you a better rate. Very often they will. And the reason they will is they don't have to pay that percentage to the middleman. Now, the percentage to the middleman can be 4 or 5%, but it can also be 30%. Yes. So the smaller hotels, they find the rates are rapacious. Now, there's also all sorts of sharp practice going on, PJ. Really, uh, stuff that would be illegal if I was to stop you in the streets and try and sell you something. But it's somehow because of the internet, it, it, does, it falls just within the bounds of the law. A very good example is what happens to some Irish hotels, and it happens to hotels abroad, is somebody replicates their website, puts up a website that looks almost exactly like theirs, sells you the same room and takes 20% and passes on the booking as if they're doing the, the uh, hotel a favour. It has happened to me for a West Ireland hotel. I thought I'd booked direct with the hotel and found I'd gone through somebody in Oregon, or no, sorry, in um, Massachusetts. Um, and they took 20% of the price. And it breaks my heart because I do think that if you're booking, particularly as an Irish holidaymaker in an Irish hotel, what money you spend should go directly to them. Yeah, yeah, I had a similar experience. Well, a similar experience, but I went up to the north in the two years that we couldn't uh, leave the island. And the first year I booked where we stayed through booking.com and we were really impressed with it. And when I was paying the landlady when we were leaving, uh, I, she, I said, can I book again for next year? And she gave me a price, xbooking.com, and I saved 300 euro. Yeah. There and then. So, there the and hotel then. With the hotel can give that percentage that they give to booking to the customer. They're very happy to do so because very often it means repeat business for them. Yeah. The future is, I think people are nervous. I, I, Owen, they, they think it's going to get out. Like some of the flights that would normally not be advertised until, say, January are up now for next summer. But I don't think they're selling yet because they're very expensive. Like if you take Ryanair, Ryanair have already posted their Canary Islands schedule for next summer. But 
people will wait for a sale. Will there be sales this year, do you think? Always sales. The reason there are always sales, PJ, is that it's not a human being that decides, oh, we have to do the sale here. It's the computer, the computer bots that Ryanair have and their tremendous, um, their, their, their back office system. It's just formidable. It's it, 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 one of the reasons the huge success of the airline is uh, the back office booking system is so strong and so good and so nimble. And at some stage, it will evaluate how many seats are selling. As you said, if you look at next summer's schedule, it's quite expensive. Now, if for if you know a certain percentage, this is all closely guarded secret. But we can speculate that by Christmas they have expected a certain number of those seats to have sold, and if it's running behind the norm, which in Ryanair's case would be back 2018, 2019, if it's running behind the norm of what they would, the price drops. If it's running above the norm, the price goes up a little bit. They would, they will catch, they will put a, a flight in the system and catch the, there are a couple of early birds who really, really need to be somewhere. They need to be somewhere for a wedding or a communion or a match or a, a sporting event, a concert. And they will sort of say, okay, well, I'm traveling next April, but I really need to be there. And let's say, um, the, the, you know, the, a certain number of seats have sold, but not as many as Ryanair expected. Mm. Coming up to January and February, that same price for that same flight in April can drop. And then when people run to it, it can float back up again. Overnight. Can, watching it from a customer perspective is an inexact science because you're not exactly sure what the what the demand for the flight at the price is. But Ryanair have it to a T. It's like trying to beat the bookies. Yes. They will have us worked out that when that plane takes off, 95% of those seats will be sold. Yeah. That means fewer than 10 empty seats on 189 air, seat aircraft, which is their traditional 737. It's a little bit more for the new Boeing 737 MAX. But, but, but it means that they have it worked out they're to a T. Yeah. They're very good. Their bots are very good. And then sometimes a human intervenes. When a human, the, the most uh, spectacular time a human intervenes is, let's say, Munster get drawn uh, to play in France. Yes. And somebody moves in and makes sure there's no uh, 1999 flights on those uh, prices on those flights. Yes. They get as much as they can they when do. the they when do. the when when the sun is out. They'll make hay, yeah. and when it's raining, they reduce the price. Oh, and lastly, the all in. Now, personally, I'd rather I'd rather eat my own eyeballs off a spoon than go to one of these all in, never leave the resort type holidays. But they're popular, particularly with people with small children. Are there there are there days numbered though? No, it's an interesting one that people don't, uh, tourist boards and countries don't really like them. But they're a bit like cruise lines. They don't like having cruise lines because everyone stays on board, eats on board, they don't spend. But it's a good way of getting people into your country. And different countries have different approaches to it. It's not a big thing in Europe. In fact, some of the countries that have all-inclusive and some of the Canary Islands have had all-inclusive uh, some of the uh, Spanish island, Spanish ma mainland but, and the Balearics have also had that. They've sort of moved against it. There was a lot of publicity about the maximum number of drinks you could have and things like that. The, the big, big resorts like to corral people, keep them in the resort. Uh, tourist boards and countries like people to move out of the hotel. They need their local markets, people selling things. Mm. They need their restaurants and their bars. It's great. And it's much better tourist experience, as you said. What I've seen is the all-inclusive getting bigger. You will have, uh, for instance, Hotel Botanico in Tenerife have 13 different restaurants, I think, yeah. on board. So you can spend the whole time there moving from restaurant to restaurant within your resort. And there are countries like Dominican Republic where the entire, uh, it's been huge stadium uh, hotels, uh, stadium resorts where you, could, you they try and keep you there and they give you a day trip out to see something. And that's basically it. You're, 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 you've got this armband around your, your, your hand and you're a prisoner uh, there for the two, for how uh, long you stay there. But they're, they, 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 chances of getting a uh, business for an, a restaurant outside the business are very small. But they are 
there's a certain taste. And you, you said at the very beginning, the small family, if you've got small children, a resort where you don't have to move, a resort where there's children's pools and adult pools, where there's play parks and zip lines for the teenagers and all of that, that's exactly where you want to be. And I've seen that a very solid product um, doing well among the family market. And uh, tour operators, um, and there are three or four, like Sunway and Tui, um, to, to operate out of Ireland, that they do very, very good business out of that because no matter what you do, no matter how often you go on the internet and try and work out your family flights and then your family transfers and to find a hotel that can even start to compete with those sort of facilities, you're not going to find it. Yeah, you can't really because they've got it all sewn up. Owen, thank you very much. We'll talk again.